warfare no longer have you found. Lift up those trumpets, make a joyful sound. Shout, hello, Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Church, you're standing on holy ground. Your tail payroll is weapons of warfare no longer have you found. Lift up those trumpets, make a joyful sound. as clean like a mighty rushing stream it's a sweet such a sweet I know It's a sweet. Thank you, Lord, for the sweet. he told them to go into Jerusalem and to tarry until they'd be endued with power from on high. I thank God for the grace and anointing that was on David with the lion and the bear, out with the sheep. I thank God for the presence anointing that in a, in a great service, the sinner and saint alike from the front row to the back row can experience the presence of God. But that wasn't the type of, of power he was talking about, but an inner power, an inner anointing that wherever we go, he goes with us. Whatever we're involved in, he's involved in it. Whatever we need, whenever we need it, on this side, that side, that's that sweet anointing. We need to seek for that anointing that the book of Jude talked about. That anointing that's flowing down on the day of Pentecost. 
going down like a rushing, a rushing stream. Thank you for that today, the anointing that brings healing, the anointing that brings deliverance, brings protection, that brings a companionship when we're lonely and we feel so alone. The anointing is there. It's always there. The anointing is available for where you are right now. Whatever your circumstance, whatever your situation, whatever you're dealing with, the anointing is available to call upon that anointing, that presence, that power, that kindred spirit. God is there, that he is there, that he cares, that he's with you. Pour it out on this program today, Lord. Pour it out in the living rooms, hospital rooms, jail cells, wherever our viewers are viewing this program. Touch with your mighty hand in Jesus' name. In the next song, just touch in the name of Jesus with your mighty hand on this program today. God bless you. I'm glad you're here with us. We're going to start the next song. We're living in grace. We're living in grace. He might turn my vocal up a hair. Living in a moment of grace. And it's all around us. She was down on her knees. She would never get free. Her accusers had stones in their hands. She came to Jesus that day. To see what it say, but Jesus just rode in the sand. They all walked away when they heard Jesus say, Let the sin free cast the first stone. There were tears on her face, her sins were erased, and she stood in a moment. Now the thief on the cross knew his life was lost. He must pay for the crimes of his past. He'd done nothing right, and he'd sure lose this fight. And he knew his time was running out fast. So he gave this last shot, said to Jesus, Remember me when you reach heaven's gate. Then his past was forgave, and his sins were erased. Then he died in a moment of grace. A moment of grace. Undeserved favor. Unspeakable joy, my soul found anchor, unmerited love, mercy that swept my soul away. talk to you just a minute you see I had been counted out by the self-righteous crowd who would say he's not worthy to live I had drifted too far so lost and since it would take a miracle only God could kill does that sound like you but you see, one day, Jesus passed by. And with this reply, he said, I choose you. Live for me today. And my past was erased. All my sins were forgave. 
I was changed in a moment of grace. A moment of grace. Undeserved favor. Unspeakable joy. My soul found an anchor. That swept my soul away. He spoke my name. Everything changed in a moment of grace. Unmerited love, yes, and mercy that swept my soul away. His matchless grace, His love, and His abundant grace. Oh, God bless you today. God bless you today. Did you know He didn't just speak my name that day, but He spoke my name from the cross. He spoke your name from the cross. He spoke your name, and He applied grace to who you are today. You're living in grace today. I'm Billy Dale Sexton. This is... Experience Jesus Christ through revelation originating from the heart of Dallas, Fort Worth, Metroplex area, and the beautiful studios of the UA Network coming to you, and also extending from the studios of Channel 25, Victory Television, out of uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, that reaches Memphis and, and Kentucky and Missouri and all over Arkansas, soon to be in my hometown, Fort Smith and Fayetteville and also Channel 16 in, uh, in Alabama. So glad to have you guys that reaches uh, over into Mississippi. So glad to have all of you being with us today and so that we could come into your home or your environment or wherever you are viewing this program today. So let God touch you today. Let him touch you today. He cares for you. Yes, he does. As a matter of fact, nobody will ever care for you like Jesus. And that's exactly what we're going to sing about right now in this next song. No one cared for me like Jesus. You'll find him to be a friend so true. That sticks closer than a brother. Let him love you right now. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so kind and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely when he did something no other friend could ever do no one ever cared for me like Jesus like Jesus there's no other friend so kind as he no one else could take the sin and the darkness from me oh but he did night he did oh how much he cares for me let him love on you this morning my life was filled with sin when Jesus found me my heart full of misery and woe and that blessed night when Jesus came, slipped his loving arms around me. And friend, he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever, 
never cared for me like Jesus like Jesus there's no other friend so kind as he no one else take all the sin and all the darkness from me but Jesus did and he'll do it for you oh how much he cares for me oh how much he cares for me, for you, you and you and me. Yes, friend, he really does. He really, really does. God bless you this morning. Welcome to the program. We're going to read a little bit from the book of Romans, in the eighth chapter, as a matter of fact. And I want to just share a little bit. What we've been doing for the last three or four uh, uh, said services, I guess, but I mean shows, programs, is speaking to you. I've been very strongly impressed to speak to you about adoption. And let me just read something right here that, uh, that Paul was, was writing here in the 8th chapter of Romans in the 14th verse. Let's start from the 13th verse. It says, <coughs> For if you live after the flesh, you shall die, but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body you shall live for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god they are the sons of god for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And, of course, the reverence to that is 2 Corinthians 1 and 22. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. And if heirs of God and, and join heirs with Christ... If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together with him. Amen. But, but the key word there is adoption. It is adoption. We have been adopted through the, the spirit of Jesus Christ. You know, as we said, it might have been last week, but, uh, you know, when, when adoption is fulfilled by the laws of the land. There's a lot of documents, a lot of background checks. There's a lot of checks and balances. There's a lot of investigation. There's a lot of uh, uh, knowledge that needs to be required, that is required to know uh, about those that, that want to foster a child and adopt a child. But you know, when Jesus adopted me, and he adopted you, I hope you have accepted that by calling on his name and asking him to come in you see <laughs> that's another thing when you're adopted in the land by the court laws laws of the court it's us that come to live with the parents that we fit in with that home the other siblings the other children the other family members. But when the Lord adopted me, he came to live with me. <laughs> he came to move in with me. He came to move in with me. And let me tell you, those adoption papers are great and they're strict and they're heavily scrutinized by the, by the courts of the land. But if I can walk out here just a little bit. But, you know, things can happen that...
causes that adoption papers to be null and void. I mean, the parents can mess up. They can, they can die. Things can happen. Situations develop to where they lose that unity of love and spirit and inspiration over some circumstance, some tragic and catastrophe, some kind of incident. But let me tell you that Jesus that I serve, who has become my father by me accepting him, by me accepting him into my heart, into my life, and to live inside of me. He adopted me through his blood on Calvary 2,000 years ago. Adoption was made. Redemption was made. Deliverance freedom, everything transpired when the centurion soldier pierced his side and the blood spilled and ran out. And then they, on the Temple Mount, a little, little ways away, that, that veil that, that covered and blocked the Holy of Holies and separated the Holy of Holies from the common place, God rent that. He tore that in two from top to bottom. Teams and teams of oxen, they said, pulling one way and pulling another way could not tear that veil. But God did. That separation was removed to where we're one with, with, with God, one with Jesus through his blood. So anyway, his adoption was carried out through his blood. You're not blood kin when you're adopted in the natural. But thank God I'm blood kin. <laughs> that royal blood is running through my veins. Let me tell you, every child of God that's been born again, that's ever received Jesus into their heart, that's ever said, yes, Lord, come and live in my heart. Come and abide with me. Let me, let me have you as my habitation. I want to move in with you, Lord, and you move in with me where there's no distance, no separation. Let me tell you, when he's living in your heart, there's nothing. The Bible said nothing can pluck us out of his hand. No enemy, no weapon, no force, no power is able to strip us from the gentle but yet firm hand of God that has us holding us tight. And the Bible says that our names are engraved in the palms of his hands. He knows every hair on her head he knows he says call out call out and call upon me and i'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know let me tell you i love to sing i love to sing at night sometimes i, w I wake up most all the time with a song and i think lord where did that song come from and he says just listen to the lyrics and i say okay <laughs> i know where the song came from because that's the song i needed that day that hour let me tell you, Jesus loves you today. I want us to pray right now. We want to invite, and we want to consummate, and we want to consolidate, and we want to bring that adoption into full force right now. He's already done his part. It's up to you now to accept that, the adoption, the adoption where we're not street people, we're not strange people, but we got a dwelling place with him. And I want you to repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Abba Father, I am here to receive my side of the covenant of adoption that you manifested and then you implemented and you legalized it with the blood running into the sand on Calvary, on the Mount of Calvary. So I'm here to say, yes, Lord. I'm here to say yes to the blood that spilled, to the crown of thorns on your head, to the nails in your hands. I'm here to say yes, Father, Abba, Father, that I want to be a part of your great family. I want to be loved by the agape love that's unconditional, that I don't have to merit it. I don't have to warrant it. I don't, I don't, ha I don't have to even deserve it. But I want to accept the grace through the blood and the mercy through the blood and and protection through the blood. All that a father should be 
You're that and more. You're so much more, Father, in the name of Jesus. So I accept you, to, and I want you to come into my heart. I want you to live in me. I want you to abide in me. And I want you, my heart to be your habitation. And then I want you to be my habitation. And I want us to jointly live together as one. I accept you as my father. I accept you as my brother. I accept you as my, my friend, my counselor, my prince of peace, my redeemer, my protector, and my companion. Write my name down in your Lamb's book of life. And Jesus, make me a citizen of your kingdom. Yes, like my favorite chef, bring, bring me out of Lodi Bar and let me live in your palace. Let me sit at your table as one of your sons and always abide with you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for hearing my prayer this morning. Let me tell you something. We don't have to live in the Lodi Bars. Let me tell you, Lodi Bar was a place of desolation for my favorite chef. He was the son of Jonathan who made a covenant with David and Jonathan before uh, uh, way before Jonathan was killed. David adopted him. That goes in this, with this service, uh, th with this uh, sermon also. David adopted him, sent a letter, sent a chariot, brought him back in his crippled state and said, no, you're going to sit here, eat at my table continually as one of my own sons. And while I have my servants, take care of your harvest, sow your seed, till your ground, and then reap your harvest and put it in your storehouses, according to Philippians, the fourth chapter that he is providing our every need according to his riches and glory. God bless you. Oh, this has been great. I wish we had more time. But until next week, just remember the name on the screen, the address and the phone number on the screen. Call us. Let us pray for you further and talk with you. Uh, and, and then send in something as a, a partnership uh, offering toward this ministry and be a part of wherever we go around the world and all over the area here. Uh, and your homes all over the place. And until next week or till next time that you tune us in on whatever station you're ch uh, watching, you know, God loves you. We love you here, and we want to hear from you. And any t anything you want to add is partnership, whether it's small or great, it's going to be welcome. It's going to be used, and you're going to be greatly rewarded for it. You really will. So until next week, this is Billy Dale with Experience Jesus Christ Through Revelation right here on the UA Network and throughout the land. In Jesus' name, God bless you. On holy ground, your tail payroll is weapons of warfare. No longer have you bound. Lift up those trumpets. Make a joy.